Is the Holy Spirit an active force, as the Jehovah's Witnesses claim, or is the Holy Spirit a person, a divine person, distinct from the Father and the Son, as the Trinitarians claim? We reach a, a problem right at the very start. Unless you define these terms, then you're not going to be able to even dialogue with another person who holds a different point of view, unless you define what you mean by those terms, active force and person. Now, there is no verse in the Bible that calls the Holy Spirit either an active force or a person. In the Jehovah's Witnesses New World Translation, which is an exceptionally poor translation of the Bible, or perhaps it would be more accurate to call it in places a mistranslation, they have dishonestly and deliberately inserted the words active force into Genesis chapter 1 verse 2. It reads, God's active force moved across the face of the waters. But the actual Hebrew text does not say that. They've, they've simply taken Spirit of God and they've mistranslated that as active force and they've put that dishonestly into the text. Also, there is no verse in the Bible where the Holy Spirit is called a person. So let's roll back the curtain. Let's go back to the very start. Everything in the world is either personal or impersonal. An impersonal thing would be something like a rock or a stone or a pile of mud. You can't go up to a, a rock or a stone or a pile of mud and have a conversation. You can't be loved by a, a pile of mud or by a rock or a stone. A rock or a stone or a pile of mud does not possess self-will. And it does not possess what we call self-cognizance. That's something where when you speak, you recognize your own existence. For instance, I could say to you, my name is Robert and I live in Plymouth. Now, when I say my and I, that's self-cognizance. I recognize my own existence. A rock or a stone can't recognize their own existence. Therefore, a rock or a stone does not possess self-cognizance. So when Jehovah's Witnesses call the Holy Spirit an active force, what they mean is the Holy Spirit is impersonal, like a rock or a stone or a pile of mud. Sometimes in their literature they use the analogy of elect electricity. On the other side of things, Trinitarians would say that the Holy Spirit is personal. Now let's be a little bit more systematic about this. When we speak and we say that the Holy Spirit is a distinct divine person who's distinct from the Father and the Son, what we mean is that the Holy Spirit possesses the four aspects of personality, which makes a person a he or a she rather than an impersonal it. These four aspects are self-cognizance, the ability to recognize your own existence when you speak and you say me or my or I, self-will, because something like electricity or a rock or a stone doesn't possess self-will. Intellect. And finally, emotion. You, you can't say that um, you can be loved by a pile of mud. Or um, you have spoken to a rock and you, you grieved the rock, you offended the rock. So, a simple definition of the distinction between what is personal and what is impersonal is that firstly, a person has self-cognizance, he or she recognizes his own existence. And this applies to the Holy Spirit at Acts chapter 13 verse 2 where we read, As they ministered to the Lord and fasted, the Holy Spirit said, Now separate to me Barnabas and Saul for the work to which I have called them. The Holy Spirit speaks and he says he uses the pronouns me and I. In other words, he recognizes his own existence. Remember, if I said to you, my name is Robert and I live in Plymouth, that's self-cognizance. When I say I live in Plymouth, I recognize that I am a distinct individual who exists and I recognize my own existence by my use of the pronoun I. Well, the Holy Spirit uses the pronoun I in Acts 13.2 go down two verses to Acts 13.4 and we find the Holy Spirit possesses self-will where we read so being sent out by the Holy Spirit they went down to Seleucia and there sailed to Cyprus so they're sent by the Holy Spirit that means the Holy Spirit has self-will well electricity a pile of mud a rock or a stone doesn't possess self-will and this is clearer in Acts 16.6 where the Holy Spirit 
forbade them to preach in a certain part of Asia. Now when they had gone through Phygria and the region of Galatia, they were forbidden by the Holy Spirit to preach the word in Asia. Acts 16 verse 6. So there's two aspects of personality. The Holy Spirit is said to have a mind. We read of the mind of the Spirit in Romans chapter 8 verse 27. The Holy Spirit is also said to possess intellect at 1 Corinthians chapter 2 verses 12 and 13 which reads now we have received not the spirit of the world but the spirit who is from God that we might know the things that have been given freely to us by God these things we also speak not in words which man's wisdom teaches but which the Holy Spirit teaches comparing spiritual with spiritual now it says here that the Holy Spirit teaches but you can't teach if you don't possess intellect if you, if you can't think, if you don't possess a mind, how can you teach? So the Holy Spirit is said to both teach and also possess a mind. Finally, the Holy Spirit is said to possess emotion. We read of the love of the Holy Spirit, that, that we can be loved by the Holy Spirit, that is, in Romans chapter 15, verse 30. And we can also grieve the Holy Spirit in Isaiah 63 10 and we can grieve the Holy Spirit in Ephesians chapter 4 verse 30 so if we can be loved by the Holy Spirit and if we can grieve the Holy Spirit wouldn't that mean that the Holy Spirit is personal rather than impersonal how can an, an impersonal thing like electricity or a rock or a stone or a pile of mud love us and how can an impersonal thing be grieved? I've gone up to the light switch with Jehovah's Witnesses present and I've turned the light switch on and off and said, I'm going to uh, turn you off electricity. I'm going to grieve you electricity. You're going to be so grieved by my action when I turn you off ele electricity. And I've literally physically done that in front of Jehovah's Witnesses, turning the light switch on and off repeatedly and then saying to the Jehovah's Witnesses, look, 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 this is going to grieve electricity. And I'm making the point that you cannot grieve and you cannot be loved by something that is impersonal, such as electricity, a rock, a stone, or a pile of mud. Only someone who is personal can be grieved or can love. So in summary, um, we find that the Holy Spirit possesses self-cognizance. He can speak and say, me and I, in Acts 13, verse 2. He possesses self-will in Acts 13, 4 and Acts 16, 6. He possesses intellect because he has a mind in Romans chapter 8, verse 27. And the Holy Spirit can also teach in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verses 12 and 13. And you can't teach unless you have intellect. Finally, the Holy Spirit possesses emotion. There's an awful lot of scriptures that I could quote, but Romans chapter 15, verse 30 talks of the love of the Holy Spirit, that we are loved by the Holy Spirit. How can something that is impersonal, like a, uh, a piece of wood or a rock or a stone or electricity, how could that love us? Finally, we can grieve the Holy Spirit by our sinful actions. Isaiah 63:10. And Ephesians chapter 4 verse 30. So what I would suggest is you go through that list with your Jehovah's Witness uh, friends, point out what do you mean by active force and person because unless you define those terms then you can't even have a conversation. And once you decide that the issue is is something personal like a man or a woman or an angel or God or even a demon or a devil they, they are they are persons or are you talking about something that is impersonal like electricity or a rock or a stone once you define your terms I think you'll find it much easier to talk to a Jehovah's Witness all that Jehovah's Witnesses really want to do is just preach to you so I would suggest try and phrase what you say in the form of questions like if a Jehovah's Witnesses says the Holy Spirit does not have self-will and I've been told that many times by Jehovah's Witnesses you could say wait well, that's really interesting but I, I don't quite understand could you please read Acts 16 6 
and he reads it. Now, when they had gone through the region of Figaria and the region of Galatia, they were forbidden by the Holy Spirit to preach the word in Asia. And you simply say, I don't quite understand it. Who forbade them to preach in Asia? And you'll be quite surprised. They'll say, well, Jehovah. Jehovah forbade them to preach in Asia. And you say, well, what does the text say? Does the text say Jehovah or does it say Holy Spirit? I don't quite understand this. Could you help me, Mr. Jehovah's Witness? Because I want to obey the Bible. The Bible is the word of Jehovah and put what you're doing in the context of obeying Jehovah God. I want to obey Jehovah God, Mr. JW. I want to do the will of Jehovah God. Please help me to understand the Bible so I can obey Jehovah God. That's what I want to do. Now, you'll find that you'll, you'll get some objections from Jehovah's Witnesses, and they're quite easy to deal with. Jehovah's Witnesses will, will tell you that the Bible says the Holy Spirit is poured out. And there are other verses that talk about um, people being filled with the Holy Spirit. So they'll say you can't be filled with a person and you can't pour out a person. Okay, well, the first objection where the Bible says the Holy Spirit is poured out, all you need to do is ask them, and, and try to put everything you say to a Jehovah's Witness in the, form, in, in the form of a question because they don't really listen to what you're saying. So if, if you kind of just um, talk to them, they kind of just switch off and all they're thinking about is what they're going to say next. If they say the Holy Spirit is poured out so the Holy Spirit can't be a person, ask them to explain Psalm 22:14. You say, I don't quite understand my, my JW friend. Because here, this is talking prophetically of Jesus, Jesus dying on the, the tree. I wouldn't use the word cross because you'll get an argument with them if you use the word cross. Jesus died upon the tree, and it says in that verse that Jesus Christ is poured out like water. So if Jesus Christ is poured out, does that mean that Jesus Christ is not a person? And just stop there. Don't preach to them. Give them that problem and ask them to explain. If they get a bit angry, or they don't like your question, say, look, all I want to do, my JW friend, is to obey Jehovah God. I want to do the will of Jehovah God. Aren't you going to help me, please, to do the will of Jehovah God? Paul is also poured out in Philippians chapter 2, verse 17, and 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 6. So, again, you just ask the same question. If the Holy Spirit is not a person because he's poured out, does that mean that Paul is not a person because he's also poured out? Obviously, this is just an idiomatic phrase. It's an expression, a Hebrew expression. It's not to be taken literally. Paul is not literally poured out. Paul doesn't become a pile of water as he's poured out. It's an idiom. And the phrase filled, where people are filled with the Holy Spirit, well, people can be filled with all the fullness of God in Ephesians 3.19. And people can be filled with Christ in Ephesians 1, verse 23, and chapter 4, verse 10. So just throw this back at the Jehovah's Witness and say if being filled with the Holy Spirit means that the Holy Spirit is not a person he's just an impersonal force well we are filled with the fullness of God in Ephesians 3.19 so does that mean that God Jehovah is not a person does that mean Jehovah is just a, an impersonal force could you help me to understand this my, my JW friend because you see I want to obey Jehovah God. I want to do the will of Jehovah God. And that's why this is important to me, my JW friend. Please help me to understand this. And remember, a tip I really must give you is try to ask Jehovah's Witnesses about these things in the form of questions. Try not to preach to them. Ask them questions because questions make people think. Finally, you could ask a Jehovah's Witness this question. If the Father is a spirit and he's a person and the son according to their theology now he he resurrected as a spirit creature they don't believe in jesus's literal bodily resurrection they believe he resurrected as a spirit creature so if the father is a spit is a spirit and he's a person the son is now a spirit and he's a person in jw theology the angels each of them each of the angels each of the demons and satan himself they're all also spirits and they're also persons then why in Jehovah's Witness theology is the Holy Spirit a spirit but he's not a person can you see the inconsistency in that so I hope that this has been helpful and again my final tip is try not to preach to the Jehovah's Witness try to put the evidence that I've given you in this little video 
the Bible verses. Try to put those Bible verses to the Jehovah's Witnesses, always in the form of questions, because questions make people think.